Spelling is hard for some of our learners, especially those with dyslexia. Those that struggle with spelling often need a multi-sensory and systematic approach when it comes to learning how to spell. In this video, I'm going to show you a week's lesson on how I would introduce spelling words to my students, specifically those students with dyslexia. And even if your child is not dyslexic, I feel like this would really benefit them as well because all learners do well with multi-sensory approaches to learning. First, introduce a new spelling pattern to my learners. What I like to do is make a list of words that follow that spelling pattern and show it to, to them. So for example, if we were to be working on the short A spelling pattern, then I would show them the list, a list of these words. And I would ask them, what do you notice that's the same about all these words? And eventually they'll get to the fact that all of these words have an A in the middle of the word. And I will explain that this A in the middle of the word makes the A sound, the short A sound. Then we get into talking about short A and its sound. And one way I like to talk about it is through a song. And I made up this little song uh, to help my students remember what short A says. And it goes like this. Short A says A. Short A says A. A, 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 Apples, alligators, astronauts. A, 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 A. Um, and then they could, after singing the song, we could change up these words that uh, match the short A sound. And then after that, we get into the phonemic awareness practice. So after we talked about the short A sound, we look for words that have the short A sound in it without looking at the letters. In this phonemic awareness lesson, we have a column for short A as in at and words that are not short A. Um, hence the X over the cat. And this slide I put up on my smart board, but we can very easily just print this out and cut um, the pictures up into little squares, the little pictures, and have them glue the pictures according to the column. And so, for example, we look at this first picture. It's a dad. And I have them stretch out that middle sound, d, ad. Or we can tap out the sounds in the word dad. And I have a video that I showed that I do on how I do this. But basically, they hold out their arm and they tap out each sound that they hear in the word. And the song goes like this. Break it down, break it down. Let's break down the word dad. A d dad. You'll realize that it's in the short A column. Let's try this one. Fox. Break it down. Break it down. Let's break down the word fox. Ox. And the middle sound says ah. So it's not short A. I could go through this whole thing with them if I see that they need extra practice, or I could have them do the rest of these on their own. So after phonemic awareness, we get into phonics with short A. And what I have my learners do is I have them highlight the short A in the middle of the word while saying its sound. So let me zoom this out for a second so I can show you properly. I would have them say A ah, as they highlight the short A. A, A, A. A, A, and so on. Then I would have them blend the sounds to read the word, and they've practiced this sound already in the previous slide. So I could have them highlight it, or I could just point it out to them. Remember, what does short A say? say? It says A. Ah. And then all they do is blend and touch each dot and say the sound. Mm, A. Ah. 
mat. J a m jam. I just put two words in as it. As an example, but they would be doing this to all of the words. I could even draw little dots underneath and have them use the same paper and touch each sound and blend it. The next lesson would be tapping out the sounds and then writing the letter, so spelling the word out. So, for example, if they, if we had the word cat. We would tap it out with our fingers or our arm first. So cat, k, a, t. Then we would write it in each, each sound in each sound box. K, a, t. Then we would write it down here as a whole word. Cat. Afterwards, we would erase and then start a new word using that same sequence. So, for example. Sat, we would tap it out. S a t. Then we would write it. S a t, and then the whole word underneath. Sat. After they've practiced reading short a words isolated, now they can practice reading short a words in a sentence. And so, I like. To have them look for that short a words or the spelling words that we've been practicing, so we read this word cat, mat, and then I have them read each word. For ex another example, dad, the spelling word, and map, and then have them read the word dad has the map, and so on. I could start with. Uh, the first three sentences that I make up myself, and then afterwards I could have them look through these words. I could have them look through all of the spelling words that they have, and have them come up with their own. Whether they tell me orally and I write it, or I could have them write out sentences themselves. The last part is an assessment. Now, there's different ways and different theories of doing this. Typically, for example, in a classroom, teachers would give spelling tests at the end of the week to assess whether or not they've the the learners have understood um, the spelling concept. What I've found. A lot of the times in giving spelling tests, most of the students will just memorize the words. And they'll get a hundred percent on their test, but then the next week they completely forget the words. They will completely forget to use what they learned in their own writing. And in, so, spelling tests not always effective. And there are other ways, there are other alternatives that you can do to assess your learner in whether or not they've understood and are able to implement these spelling patterns. Another way is dictation sentences. You say a sentence, just kind of like a spelling test, and you have them write it out, and you check to see if they have followed that pattern, that spelling pattern that they learned correctly. So, for example, I could give this as a dictation sentence: "I see a cat on a mat," and then I would check to see if "cat" and "mat" were spelled correctly. Another form of assessment would be. Just monitoring their writing. So I would take my learners' journals or workbooks, and I would just check and see whether or not they are spelling short a patterns correctly. If they are using what they learned in these past lessons in their inventive writing, and that is really where you will see whether or not they've grasped that spelling pattern. That's it, my friends, for today's video. Is there something that was insightful and helpful to you in this video? Comment down below. I'd love to know. If this video has been helpful for you, make sure you give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when new videos come on. Make sure you check out that free download. I'll link it down below so that you can start using it with your learner right away. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.